Hello everybody, thanks for checking out this video on G4G here on YouTube. I'm your host, Napalm Dawn. Today's background music is brought to you by Half Hour of Acoustic Music by Rob Scallon. A link will be up so you can investigate his music here on YouTube. So today we're going to finally get around to doing part one of the top most impactful heroes of all time in Marvel Avengers Alliance. Now, please understand that when it comes to these heroes, we are going to be considering both PvE and PvP. However, obviously it is more easy to define the most impactful heroes in PvP as it has a more definable structure to it. Just about any hero can be good with an agent who can use items and whatnot, but PvP is kind of where you can say somebody has power as compared to PvE. Now, let's jump into it. This is going to be part one of two because every time I have recorded this, it has always been 40 to 50 minutes long. So I'm not going to be able to do all of them. We will do page one through ten in this. And rather than categorize by classes, since everybody may use a particular hero in a different class from me, we're just going to go in chronological order. So first up, the Agent. The Agent is always the most impactful hero. He is number one in your PvE and PvP. However, simulator tasks and missions, the new daily missions, have begun to highlight how other heroes can be stronger than the Agent or function alone without the Agent. So, that aside, let's get into it. Iron Man deserves a definite nod over here simply because of the fact that he's probably everybody's first usage when it comes to PvP. He's also got a pretty solid character loadout and has been rather impactful on group bosses in his ugly uniform which is the Iron Man Mark V. Spamming his Unibeam along with the Stamina Restore was very very strong with Iron Man up against group bosses. But for the most part, he doesn't really stand out anymore. Captain America is probably everybody's first tank, especially when it comes to PvP. And he has a huge impact in farming in PvE, thanks to Mission 12.2. He's probably considered one of the best early game low-level tanks. And I think he is a jack-of-all-trades as a toolbox on offense if you use the CSR alt. Nobody really shares my love of CSR that much, and for defense, you can't really use CSR or in the hands of the AI, but he's very good in capable offensive hands. Colossus has had his moments in the sun and recently came back during the Big Emma meta. He's gone away a little bit since then, but he did share a second life when it came to using the Elite ISO and being teamed up with Emma. His Phoenix 5 healing passive is rather large and makes for some obnoxious matches. He is starting to fade a bit, however, but he is a pretty decent tank. And with all of the new tanking ISOs and his personal one, he will remain solid thanks to the almost worthy-esque bleeding, burning, and chilled immunity. He's also highly resistant to psychic attacks, so he pretty much runs the gamut as being a good tank. Cyclops is probably also one of those characters that is in everybody's first set of PvP teams. His evasive maneuvers back in the day was so incredibly obnoxious because the entire team would get combat reflexes for the entire round and everything that hit them. It's now been nerfed, but he was pretty solid back in the day. He has a nice little disadvantage and an optic blast that sets up flanked. He was pretty good in the day and his don't die on me man really really was very strong when the uncanny alt came out. People think of the chapter masteries lately as all worthy heavy but there was definitely a time in which 90s uh, Cyclops over here was doing a very very good job in PvP and was almost making teams immortal. Sweats Devil is making a little bit of a name for Daredevil, considered one of the most unused history of all unused heroes of all time. 
Uh, however, he's just kind of making a minor impact. He is really, really solid with those interrupts. And that pass the bar is obnoxious as hell when it comes to interrupting people, especially critical abilities. The all attacks gaining stealthy is very, very nice for a non-infiltrator. Human Torch is another one of those ones that probably everybody spends time with at the lower levels. His extreme evasion, thanks to his blazing speed, makes him very tough to hit. Nova Blast can wipe the board when it comes to being low on health. And his uh, Cosmic Control Rod early in the day was really, really obnoxious to constantly being smacked by this thing. He's obviously faded out tremendously. He's pretty vanilla at this point, but he definitely is a scourge in the very low levels of PvP. Hulk was big in the day, not so much on any of the alts other than the World War Hulk. He was the first uh, way of getting Warbringer out to everybody until we got the Warbringer Axe. Now a few other heroes have ISOs that do it. But uh, this was definitely a hard-hitting Hulk back in the early levels of PvP. Grey Hulk is also relatively solid and has a few team-ups that he can use with people. And there was some hopes for the Age of Ultron Hulk, but it never really materialized. Invisible Woman was decent back in the day, but really hit a mega stride with the air pressure iso the fact that she comes in a blaster outfit and an infiltrator outfit the one most commonly seen in pvp is really solid air pressure is such a good iso for her it's actually really really tough to run any other iso for her including the covert iso or maybe even fatal finish force cage basically has no real equal out there and is very good for just, you know, putting somebody on a shelf and leaving them there until the team can get to them. Iron Fist. Poor Iron Fist. Another one in his vanilla uniform that was pretty good in low-level PvP. But then really took off when he got his chapter suit. Not so much for the healing and the cleansing at start, but his ridiculous combo breaker that single-handedly made the Neural Purge almost a necessity in every PvP match. Once Combo Breaker began, began to get, you know, shut down a little bit, he became the biggest support of all time. We're now learning that perhaps the Iron Fist nerfs were due more in part to people like Cloak and Dagger and Angrier coming up, and maybe they just didn't want somebody like Angrier and Iron Fist on the same team at the same time. It's really, really sad, and he also had a really, really good function in PvE. Absolutely ridiculously powerful when it came to group bosses, and was definitely part of Team Iron and Iron, or Up the Irons, which was Iron Fist and Iron Man, designed to keep the stamina high and the Unibeam spamming. He was extremely popular on my offensive team for many seasons with Molly, ASG, and Elsa, but unfortunately his nerfs have basically knocked him out of his position of power. Comes in a nice bruiser and scrapper suit, of which both have equal merit. Poor Luke Cage started off as one of the worst heroes in the game, got a refactor, and he did okay. It certainly was good to use him with Quicksilver teams at the time thanks to the exploit of the combo setup and the knockout punch for people having combo setup and Sweet Christmas and the ISO about uh, knuckling up with Bodyguard. But then came Null. Null was such a force when it came to PvP. He was extremely strong. And then when his meteors got changed to magic and we had magic warding, he kind of disappeared and then didn't have the strength that he used to. Now that magic warding has been changed, he is back in force and is enjoying a huge position of power thanks to his subtle debuff action not being interrupted by the dev and can put out despair, straining, or a pesty type ailing. 
very, very strong right now. The Worthy are definitely kings and queens of PvP right now. And it remains to be seen what can dethrone them. Phoenix was a very big factor in PvP a while ago. Not necessarily tied to high or low level players, just extremely strong. White Crown Phoenix was a scourge. Her constant rezzing and her often bugged rezzing was incredibly tough to deal with. She's faded a lot now, although she did enjoy a little bit of a resurgence when P5 Emma Frost was getting her resurgence. She does have the chance to make everybody's attack psychic, which will penetrate most intangible type effects. Considering the fact that she could be equipped with Blaster Blow Up and make the team psychic and have a chance to block psychic attacks and take less damage from psychic attacks, there is definitely a, a reason to use Phoenix in PvP right now, but nobody seems to be taking advantage of it. Spider-Man in his future foundation suit, you may not remember it, but he was definitely really strong back then. He was evasive as hell and known as one of the great all-time evasion tankers back in the day. He jumped in on a lot of stuff with his uh, great responsibility, he had the tingling sensation, had the future countdown which worked very well with Invisible Woman and others. He was really strong. He's faded a lot lately and nobody's really using him. Despite the fact that he could have maybe had a resurgence with ASG. I've always loved his Amazeball suit, and when the Covert ISO first came out, I really wanted a team a level 15 Covert ISO Infiltrator Black Suit Spider-Man, god that's a lot to say, with ASG, hoping that he would constantly be countering people with an exploit webbing. Unfortunately, ASG took a massive nerf before I could never in ever initiate that team. Kurth. Another one rescued from the doldrums of obscurity by the Worthy Suits. So, Spider-Woman, again, like Luke Cage, was absolutely horrible. And nobody really used her. Her heroics were tough. She was just kind of underpowered and not really good at that much. She got a bit of a refactor, which helped. But then when she became Kurth, the position formerly occupied by Juggernaut with her hot dog hammer... Seriously, look at the ends of that hammer. Doesn't it look like the end of a hot dog with a little bit of wrinkling to it? She became a queen of PvP. Again, she never really um, suffered from the whole magic warding thing that Null did. Perth stayed in place and has been in a high place of PvP for many, 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 many seasons now. She has a lot of people that she can work with. She loves when the Deb turns off stealthy and subtle. She has great companionship with Null and the other Worthy. It also goes great with people like Emma, Colossus, and even Heimdall who makes people non-stealthy. There really isn't much stopping Kurth, and much like Null, has two slots in which to use the new debuff-related ISOs. Storm, you may not remember it, but Storm had her heyday for a limited period of time. She was pretty good. She made teams extremely hard to hit with Protective Shroud. It seems like maybe Playdom is kind of pushing for a return lately with her new AI so, and the fact that she could go particularly well with a Lightning meta. Unfortunately, she's just not really materializing. She's always been an absolute stamina pig because her Protective Shroud and Tornado take up huge amounts of stamina. But in all honesty, she is really good and not to be overlooked. Thor and Pepsi Can, two of the biggest sweepers of all time. As a matter of fact, back in the day, if you team these two up, you could probably kiss your team goodbye in the first round. Thor has had several decent suits, including a very, very solid run from the Mighty Thor, especially the Scrapper version. He was quite tough. He's faded a lot now, but he is in the lower levels of PvP, thanks to his Age of Ultron alt and the Mighty Shroud, which is renewable and is the only renewable shroud in the game. 
It only works for an agent who's considered part of the Age of Ultron set or other Age of Ultron alts. Pepsi, what can we say about Iron Patriot, AK War Machine? An absolute tremendous PvP sweeper and very, very good for lots of PvE missions when you need to get them done quickly, like the West Coast Avengers or Avengers, period. Also very good for flyers. His use of energy is extremely strong, and the full overcharge 21 gun salute has never been nerfed in the entirety of time that he's been around. Combo Breaker pretty much put an end to Pepsi's uh, long-standing flight of fancy in PvP, but there's nothing stopping him from coming back now, to be honest. Now that Hafe has been run out of the game, it really only leaves things like the Raft Shank and the Hammer Pistol that can stop him now. Mockingbird was part of the original Pesty Killers back in the day. You can see Kingfisher videos around that time of using Mockingbird and Havoc and Pressure Points to mop the floor with what was considered the king team at the time of Nico and Pesty. To every great team there is a great counter and Mockingbird was it. We now have Nurkod as part of the Worthy. Not that Mockingbird was ever bad. Unlike a lot of the other Worthy who were, worthy who were simply trash heroes, Mockingbird has always been very, very solid and had very good ISOs. Nurkod herself has very good ISOs and can hit like a truck. She's teamed up pretty well with Kurth and she actually functions pretty well on stall teams. She has no real weakness other than converting her to a counter class that the rest of your team can abuse. Emma, definite queen of PvP for a long time and was even part of sweeper teams when mental trauma hit really, really hard. She enjoyed a huge but broken resurgence in her infiltrator suit when the covert ISO came out, preemptively applying psychic tap to people who had no choice but to take the hit from the mind damage. Yeah, really, really obnoxious, but Playdom actually stepped in and fixed that one. Rather than have the community drive a counter team and run her out, Playdom did it for us. Rogue has always been pretty solid, but her definite high point was the infiltrator version of the famine suit. Nobody ever got the blaster version because it was garbage. As you can see, I don't have it. Now, she suffered from a really, really bad AI. If you got the ISO that says she starts off with Black Horse, the AI was like, fuck you, I'm gonna do it anyway, and she always up and opened up a Black Horse, no matter what. Classy Rogue is still extremely powerful in PvE, and is really good for tough missions when you want to absorb lots of powers and use them against bosses. Gambit was the dirty little secret of offensive PvP for a long time. With his ability to act until his stamina ran down until Playdom finally fixed it with the Ace of Spades spam into the Bow Roulette, into the Ace of Spades, into the Bow Roulette. Gambit's fallen off the radar. Nobody really ever talked about him. I think maybe because we never wanted Playdom to find out about their big mistake. Quicksilver. Huge impact in PvP in the day. Scrapper, Blue Suit, Quicksilver, or as I like to call him, Bisquick, single-handedly ran an entire class out of PvP. Quicksilver was so popular, it literally put a sign on PvP and said, Infiltrators not allowed. He has probably been the only hero in the entirety of PvP who actually ran an entire class out of the meta. People don't always understand how to use Quicksilver. You can occasionally do him up wrong and he becomes Light Pepper, but when people know how to use Quicksilver and create teams around him like the old Quick Jugs, Quick Magneto, Quick Null, Quick Lock, Spit Quick, Quick Lord, all those, you have an extremely tough hero on your hands. There is nothing stopping somebody from giving 
Quicksilver a mystical ISO and setting him up with Null and letting Tag Team go crazy. As a matter of fact, Quicksilver and Null were a definite force before Null had many worthy partners out there. Nowadays, his Age of Ultron suit in its blaster form has become relatively popular, but I still believe that the blaster AOU Quicksilver is just not that strong. Doesn't compare to the Bisquick one. Deadpool, often called Justin Wood's favorite character of all time, considered unnerfable. Deadpool was always ridiculously obnoxious in PvP. His ability, especially when teamed with Pesty or constant uh, buff cleaners on the enemy team, it was just impossible to deal with. He actually was so unkillable for a season, it got extended by a week. We have two Scrappers and a Blaster. The Scrapper and Blaster belong to the X-Force series and do have some X-Force passives. Now, his whole laptop and buggy and the Nerf bat were just impossible to deal with and probably the reason why you see that tooltip of the AI does not have a greater chance of proccing things than you do. In the case of Deadpool on defense, we're all going to call bullshit on that one and never believe played on because I have watched many, 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 many times in PvP where Deadpool has a counteraction to everything my team does in an entire round. Quick nod to Ghost Rider, who's going to become a worthy. Let's see what happens to him. Hercules had a decent run in PvP, not really used too much anymore. Pesty, along with Quicksilver, has probably been one of the most single uh, genre and meta-defining hero of all times. Pesty literally has no equal and all of PvP until the Scroll of Rudimaroth came around, which took the best of Pesty and took the worst of Pesty and put it in the attic and shut the little trap door. Pesty is one of the most obnoxious things to deal with simply because how he changes the landscape. His presence should change the background almost like uh, the Scroll of Agnazak does, or going into outer space, or underwater does. He was the only hero that basically says, yeah, those debuffs, you're not going to clean them. And that's because of Paradise Lost. He also worked out really well with Faustian Bargain with the chance of putting your debuffs onto the enemy team. Tactical Pesty was pretty much the way to go for a long time until the Covert ISO revitalized the infiltrator version of him and suddenly made it decent still a hero with no real equal out there and you know what vanilla beast actually was pretty decent back in the day psylocke is one of those heroes who just tends to run slightly under the current meta i used her quite extensively with her personal uh, actually, with uh, Snappy Service back in the day, until I got the uh, the mutant ability that uh, the name is escaping me at the moment, but that um, the mutant thing that says all your mutants get rally and Snappy, uh, you know, uh, not Snappy Service, they do get that, but they also get the morale boost and everything like that. I have it in my inventory, I used to use it all the time, the name is just escaping me at the moment, but Psylocke, along with Quicksilver, was definitely very, very strong in PvP for a long time. She got a little bit of extra life when the X-Force alts came out, and she still really, really assists in those fast-moving, kill-you-in-the-first-turn teams. Not so much paired up with Star-Lord, but definitely sees some play with Spitfire, and Quicksilver, and I've used her and X-Force Archangel together on two different PvP occasions. Sadly, she got replaced mid-season for me in 29 by a tactical suicide team. However, if I didn't invent that team, I probably would have finished out the season with her and Archangel. 
She's definitely still in the meta and has maintained a decent presence without it really ever dipping too much. Havoc. Definitely one of the uh, two main heroes in the Pesty Killers back in the day. Havoc's glorious ability to shut down his counterclass, AoE exhaust, use energy, potentially kill somebody in the first round back in the day led to him getting a nerf. He can no longer channel energy and plasma wave in the first turn, but his plasma spheres is still extremely strong and is used as one of the best setups of pressure points today. Havoc has disappeared from the meta thanks to his radiation love and the fact that Kurth simply laughs at radiation. So bye bye to Havoc, but you know what? He might be used in a blaster blow up team, that's certainly something. And he can protect allies from energy attacks, which is pretty solid. Magneto. Magneto is one of these people who has always run slightly under the current of the main meta, just like Psylocke. Magneto back in the day would destroy you in the mid-levels of PvP. After somebody's magnetized, hitting them with heavy metal... Forget the stun, it just probably was going to kill you. The fact that he was able to put up the magnetic field, which makes killing or really damaging his teammates, uh, you know, it made it such a bad thing to do because they got an extra turn. He was just really, really good. He's gotten some ISOs recently and definitely enjoys a lot of the tactician ISOs like Snappy Service and Unexhaustible. He is an energy-based hero, so there's a few things you can do with him, and he's always going to like the Rectifier. He is a mutant, so he would benefit from the same device uh, that I mentioned earlier. That, again, the name is escaping to me. It'll come to me before the end of the video, because I always used to use it with Molly. Well, not Molly so much, but I used to use it with Archangel and Psylocke the first time I used them in PvP. X-23 was another hero to give us Warbringer. She was pretty solid back around the Horsemen of the Apocalypse time. She might enjoy a little bit of a comeback with some of the ISOs that she's gotten lately, and the fact that, like some heroes, she does like pressure points and Paragon exploitation. She is a heavy bleeder and one of the few people who can shred, which is to put a bleeding-like effect on people who don't actually bleed. This way, bleeders can take advantage of it. Captain Britain was, again, one of those super, super strong people in PvP for a while. And then just kind of got written out of the picture. I think he actually took a nerf, if I remember correctly. Now, with his new ISOs that are out there, he could become a solid bruiser tank again. He's one of those tanks that is definitely capable of dishing out tons of damage. Unlike X-23 and Shocker and everything like that, loves pressure points, creates them, and exploits them. Black Knight was kind of nowhere for a long time, used in the mid to lower levels of PvP as being one of the few tanks that isn't a bruiser. He also was one of the few people who gave the rather overpowered magic warding for a while. He enjoyed a huge resurgence back when he was bugged for a season or two, where he spent the first half of every match tanking everything you threw out there, including subtle and defensive actions, and he healed, and he healed, and he dodged, and he healed, and he healed. You, you just had to wait. You had to put your team on autopilot and twiddle your thumbs until he finally stopped. Omega Sentinel, along with Rescue, was part of Team Shutdown, or as we like to call them, Team Last Day. Omega Sentinel, aside from being that last day long, drawn out defensive team along with Rescue, she was also pretty popular in PvP. She just does so much. She heals, she tanks, she shields, she goes on offense, and she has a huge finest hour hit. Worked really well with Heemdahl for a while. She's fallen out pretty badly lately and nobody's really using her. She does have a very awkward ISO called the indexing ISO where she can become one of the other classes that she can become and mesh it with her current class. So for example, 
If she's in a scrapper form and a blaster attacks her, she turns into a tactician that has access to her scrapper abilities. Now, her, along with some other class switchers, are allowed to activate their tactical benefits in the first round because they're not considered a tactician at heart. She starts as a scrapper, can switch to a tactician, and in the first round, activate that bonus if she's 15. Union Jack kind of sprung up from nowhere to being a rather sizable force when it came to Rocket Raccoon, Hogun, and then later Spider-Man Noir in any of the level 15 infiltrators and scrappers. He likes to join in on counterattacks and follow-ups. Very easy to build a team around him and very easy to tilt everything towards offense and set up a good Union Jack team. Rescue. Man, people cried when Rescue got established in PvP. They just considered her so hard to take down. She tanked everything, she shielded, she healed, she cleansed stuff, she offensively removed stuff. So obnoxious for a long time. She's never really come back, even with the new ISOs that help out defending actions and tacticians. But she was definitely part of that last day defense that was meant to stall your defensive teams. That ugly faceplate is in full effect when it comes to her game sprite. And she's kind of dead and buried, but she definitely had a time in which Rescue was extremely popular and everybody hated dealing with her. Red Hulk is kind of gone in and out when it comes to his popularity. He was fairly popular early on thanks to his just huge ass gamma bomb that put so many debuffs on you and had a high chance to stun or exhaust you. He then faded but came back when people realized he was amazing with Pasty. And then he kind of faded again in favor of Enchantress despite the fact that he's a lot hardier than Enchantress. But Enchantress did so much in a round, people thought it was better. Red Hulk is enjoying quite a decent amount of comeback thanks to some of the new Protect related ISOs, Snappy Service, and his personal E ISOs. Red Hulk, again, is just one of those ones who floats a little under the really popular meta line. Lots of people are using him with Spitfire and Null. He's kind of heavily melee based other than the Gamma Bomb, so he's pretty good with tag team. Ah, Juggernaut. Along with Magneto, one of those few people who literally laugh when it comes to psychic attacks. He's like, ha! It just winds up being a flat-out dodge. You can't Noro Purge him. You can't do that kind of stuff. Like Quicksilver, very, very, very well suited to the mega attack-based PvP setup. However, once we got things like the Hugin's Eye and the Elite ISO draining and the fact that he doesn't have stealth and he's melee and everything like that, what can you do? He also began to get unpopular when the weather control device came out, which exhausted him. It really slowed him down and allowed you to deal with him later. Mr. Bullethead over here still could become a force if we ever start seeing the worthy go away or drain items go away. Over here we now have Angrier. As Damon Hellstrom, Damon was a little bit popular when he first came out. Especially when you had other agent gears like the Nathathrium Trident. I'm probably saying that wrong. But, um... Oh, Mark of the Brotherhood! I told you I was going to remember that mutant thing. Mark of the Brotherhood. Yeah. Um, Damon was somewhat popular and kind of tough to take down at the time. Thanks to his then version of Twisted Flames and those Purifying Flames. And he just healed and he healed and he healed and he healed for everything he did. Well, somewhere along the line, Damon bulked up and became angrier, breaker of PvP. He's now super teamed up with Null for Magic Teams and Kurth. He is extremely tough to deal with. A Mystic Shroud or Warding Essence helps you but only so much in the beginning round, and he can actually take advantage of that. After the Shroud goes down, he's mind-controlling your team, he's causing malignant poison, 
He doesn't seem to be doing anything other than summoning lately. I will say that whenever Angrier is on the field, he is my first kill. Be it my tactical suicide team or my Archangel and Psylocke when I was using them. Satana enjoyed a very strong resurgence when Pesty first came out. When Pesty hit the floor, everybody looked at Satana and said, Done. Yet nobody really thought about who was going to go well with Pesty so much as they went done when it came to Satana. She takes anybody on her team and turns them into a wrecking ball. She's very good in PvE as she can ramp up the damage of even the puniest little heroes like Kami. I was using Satana and Kami a lot together while they were both leveling and Kami hits hard when Satana's around. Lots of people hit hard when Satan is around. Unfortunately, that's when Quicksilver was still very popular, so Satana's run ended fairly quickly. However, there's nothing stopping Satana and Angrier teams at all, or Satana and Null, or Satana and Pesty. Electra? Yeah, she was used quite a while ago in PvP, and she was really obnoxious to deal with because of the internal bleeding. One of the only internal bleeders of the time. She was a pain if you were running a tactician. She often used Reign of Blood right early on so everybody was internally bleeding and then she, before Gamora, really knew when to use Assassinate. She's totally disappeared even with the Covert ISO. We'll probably never see Elektra again, but don't overlook her. She's fun. Ares. Ares made using the Mystic Shroud kind of almost unimportant for a while. One of the few people other than things the agent can do, thanks to crush your enemies, he can simply erase a shroud early on. He also could be making a big comeback thanks to his use of despair and the fact that you don't have to farm for the Ionic Devourer or get expensive ISOs to get despair. I'm not seeing him, but that's not to say he's not around in the lower to mid levels. He is very good, and he almost always opens up with personal war and crush your enemies, and the stun can follow up. Somehow remove the buffs goes first, and then the stun gets applied, so it is entirely possible to get stunned out in the first round by him. Black Bolt, the guy we always want to make a team around, but it's really tough to do. Could be a force, and his ambient particles got a major buff a while back. Unfortunately, just never was that strong in PvP. Don't underestimate his power word, though. Very, very good in PvE. So we're now nearing our last page in part one over here. Spiral made a pretty decent comeback with Null, thanks to almost everything that she does being magic other than her level one, but you can certainly give her a mystical ISO and fix that. She was kind of complicated to use before her personal ISO, but she's really, really strong in PvE when you get her ISO and unlock all of her dances all of the time. She's a lot of fun and was one of the only D powers we ever had in the game for a long time. It's changed and now D power has been nerfed, but she was pretty good with certain people, especially like Pesty or any other D power lovers. Heimdall, pretty much again like Pesty, one of the only ones who does what he does. He makes it so that you can't run stealth against him, and it really helps ensure that tanking agents protect that big hero that everything goes around. Vigilance and Yallerhorn were probably the most cleansed thing in all of PvP, and he got better when he got his Impasse ISO. He still very, very strong nowadays. If you pair him up with a tanking agent and a deb pre-nerf, you've got a tough team to take down. Put him with Angrier and make it so that you can't stealthily kill Angrier in the first round, you might be in for a long battle. Loki, Kingfisher used to like to say that he hated running into Loki on defense. I gotta say, I never really did. But with his new ability to go early in combat and that blue deck ISO, really messing with magic, there is a place for Loki nowadays. He's a stamina pig thanks to all his quick and free actions, but 
Loki is pretty strong. If you have the unexhaustible tactician ISO from PvP, you may want to try using it. Dr. Voodoo's been broken on and off, but he was one of the first and only people in the game that could do possession. Dr. Voodoo does lots of things and he does them right. Gets huge heals off of Staff of Legba. Does so much on the Voodoo incantation, including massive stamina drains. Energizing before it was really popular. Doom. And of course the ever popular Possessed. He also had the underutilized Evandor Compatriot spell, and it has a, uh, an A-ISO that got released for it. Don't overlook Voodoo, he can be pretty powerful, especially with the whole blaster blow-up thing that's been going on. And last but not least, Sabretooth. Yeah, Sabretooth was very popular in PvP for quite a long time, thanks to the opening round of Berserker and Tantrum. If you weren't running a Mystic Shroud, you probably had a stun. He also gets super jacked up after he gets five stacks of his Enragement. And he really takes to a lot of the Scrapper Isos very nicely, especially if you have him at 15. Unfortunately, Bleed Teams have disappeared, but he was pretty strong for quite a while. And like Ares, you almost always knew quick action and then a nice big fat AoE level 9 was coming your way at the beginning of every combat. So guys, there's part one of the most impactful heroes of all time in Marvel Avengers Alliance. Stay tuned for video number two. Uh, again, I do apologize that it's long, but at least by me splitting up, I can make it a little bit longer and go into more proper detail on these heroes and hopefully not overlook anybody. If you think I overlooked somebody really important in the first 10 pages, let me know about it below. And it might get a nice honorable mention in the next video. Take care, everybody.